Now, if you look over on the other side, you will see a picture of dinosaurs. Now, hold on here. I'm going to do something here and get this right. Okay. Now, I'm going to zoom this in. I'm going to show you something. Now, if you notice here the dinosaur, and I'm going to scroll and bring around here and show around on the dinosaurs. Now, now if you notice all these different pictures of the dinosaurs, right? Now, what I want you to do is I want you to use your mind. Open your mind now for a minute. Now, you have to understand something, that the angels were supernatural creatures. They were beings from God. Now, just suppose now, well, we're just, I'm, I'm, what I want you to do is open your mind and think about this. Here is the normal, natural animals. Here is the dinosaurs. And here are the animals. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to use your mind. And I want you to open your mind here for a minute. I'm going to move this around here. I'm going to juggle things around, so I'm going to try to help you with all this and try to give you some understanding of what I'm trying to bring across there. Now, here's the dinosaurs, okay? And then here are the normal animals. Now, I'm going to zoom this in, and I'm going to show you what I'm, what I'm trying to bring across here. Here's your normal animals. Now, I want you to, I want you to suppose now that these are the natural creatures made by God. All right? They're made. That's a cow, right? That's normal. That's a normal size. But suppose now that the angels have free reign over the animals, the chickens, the goose, the horses, the dogs, all these different natural animals. The angels did. They performed unnatural acts on these animals. Meaning to say, this is the first actual account in, in what we know of in perversion as bestiality. Okay? This is what I'm trying to get across here. This is what I'm trying to say. The angels brought this around. They are the first one who created bestiality. In other words, having sex with animals. They're the ones that did it, because you have to understand. They had never had sex before. They were in heaven. They had the blessings of God, the, the pureness of God. They now were committing unnatural acts, as the Bible says. In other words, they went crazy. They went nuts over sex. And because they could no longer have sex with the women that they had married. Excuse me. Let me get, let me get back with you. I'm going to straighten myself up here for a minute so I can do this right. Okay. Because they couldn't have sex with the partners that they had married, the daughters of the tribe of Dan. In other words, they went a little ballistic here. They started having sex with the animals. This is the first count of bestiality. The angels, in their perversion, created this. You have to understand, they did unnatural acts. It never said that the men did the actual, uh, unnatural acts. It says that they performed unnatural acts. This is where I believe the dinosaurs came from, was right here, was from the unnatural act of sex with these animals. And because of this mistake that the angels had done, they created this offspring, this unnatural offspring between themselves and the natural perversion that they did with these animals, natural animals. Because you have to understand there was horses, cows, fishes, all different kinds of species of animals 
created these unnatural beings, monsters as it were, and the Dead Sea Scrolls recounted. They performed these unnatural acts. Now, I'm going to get back with you and I'm going to show you something here. And because I indicate in video one how that the giant offspring from the angels, the men, the giant men, were asked to attack or to defend against these monsters. Okay? The angels created both offsprings. The giant or the angels of fallen watchers created not only this offspring of the dinosaurs, they also created the giant men from the union, reunion of the angels and the women. And they were asked, the giant men were asked to kill or fight against these dinosaurs because the natural size of men could not defend themselves against these brew of monsters. So, and I'm not giving a hypothesis or my theory. I'm using the account of what was written in the wording of Scripture and what was wrote down in an account. So let me get back to you and I'll show you something. Okay, I'm back. And... I'm sorry that the video and everything else here is kind of obscure, and I'm having problems here with my camera. But anyway, uh, as you notice over here, I have a, uh, a guide of the dinosaurs here. You know, you can see that right there. All right, now, uh, what I'm going to read here is what is indicated over here, and it says the outcome uh, uh, the outcome of the demonic corruption, uh, you have to understand what happened was the angels, was violence, perversion, and a brood of monsters. So this is where the dead, this is where the, I believe that what took place between the angels, fallen watchers, and the animals, the natural animals, and they had reunion with the natural animals and created these brew of monsters which is dinosaurs and that's where I think man has their time thing all screwed up as far as when they think these dinosaurs were existed and alive now I'm going to bring a video and it's going to show what I feel that took place because you understand God destroyed the world with the flood. And it's accounted in the Bible. It's wrote in the Bible. The flood came. Noah and his children, his sons and his wife and his sons' wives got on the ark and left with the natural animals that he was allowed to take. These creatures here, these demonic creatures created by the uh, angels and the unnatural act of the animals were destroyed by the flood. That's why God only picked certain ones of the animals that was allowed to go into the ark. That is also recorded in the Bible of the law that if anyone lays with a beast, an animal, the beast would be slain and so would the person because it's unholy, it's unnatural. So, this is where I believe that took place here. These dinosaurs was an unnatural creation between the supernatural and a natural, as well as it was for the angels to mate with the women and created the giants, because that's recorded. And I'm going to bring a video and, and let you get a feel of that video. Give me a minute here. Okay, I'm back. What I'm going to do is narrate as long with the, with the video of this moving along. I'm going to stop it and pause it every once in a while to do what I want to do, to give it a, a description of things that's in the video. 
I think you'll find it very interesting. On this portion of the biblical text, this video is for those people. But no one ever mentioned who were counting this issue is that according to the story itself, the tribes that they killed were non-human hybrids called the Nephilim, and they were huge. They had iron beds, 13 feet long, 6 feet wide. All right, if you notice back there uh, in that video, you've seen a description of a man standing by a picture uh, it went back too far so I'm sorry for that uh, I'm going to try to go back if I can so it might be a rerun again so the tribes that they killed were not human hybrids so just so bear with me now and they were huge there. Uh, now if you notice here this man is probably about 5'10 uh, the bone that you see at the top of the description of this picture is not man generated. They found this bone. You also see up there the pelvic bone uh, of the hips. This is that part of the leg right here going to the knee. And there's the knee and the rest of the leg and the foot. This bone right here is about the length of this total man in the full size okay that's how big this bone is this is the upper leg bone joined to the hip so that shows you and give you a description of the size of in fact they said this bone was 47 inches that was the uh, human femur right there that bone that you see that's the femur uh, the top bump, uh, leg bone of a person is 47 inches long. Okay? You understand what I'm saying here? That bone alone is four feet long. Almost as long as that man. And that's the femur. That's just one bone connected. Now, that's just one bone they found. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this out here. They have iron beds, 13 feet long, 6 feet wide. It says that the Israelites were like grasshoppers in the sight of the Canaanites. Now, if you notice here, this is a uh, illustration picture, of course, but it shows you the giant, supposed to be Goliath in this picture. You see the spear and how long the spear is compared to the size of David. Now, David's a small child, probably about 14, 15 years old. But it shows you the narration of the size of the size of this person compared to David. So we're going to go on and finish it out. These Nephilim were the offspring of very evil spiritual beings, and they were apparently the primary reason God sent the flood. Satan knew of the prophecy of one that would come to defeat them, and before any of the prophets came to expand on how this was to occur, all he knew. He knew, Satan knew by the account of Genesis in the beginning of Genesis how God said he would put an enemy, an enemy between his seed and her seed. That was Jesus. He knew that the Messiah was coming. He just didn't know how. And that's why he was trying to offset the uh, offspring uh, of the descendants by screwing around. And this is what he was trying to do. At that point, it was that the Messiah would be a human. The Nephilim were an attempt to infiltrate the entire bloodline of humanity so that the Messiah could not be a full-blooded man. And if it weren't for Noah and his family, it would have worked. But then when Abraham found out from God that the land of Canaan was to be given to Abraham, Satan also found out. And he had over 400 years to plant this fine field of Nephilim in the land of Canaan in an now, if you notice there, these are hatchets, weapons. If you notice there, the woman is about 5'6". You can tell right there the hatchet, how big the hatchet was compared to the woman. There's no way a man, even at 6 foot or 7 foot, could wield the size of that hatchet, the weapon. So this is the weaponry that was created back then. They found these, dug them up, and these were the hatchets 
that the Giants use. Also, uh, because of these weapons and the sizes, the size that was used here, they were used, uh, like I told you before, the angels created both offsprings. They created the, the giant men and also the dinosaurs. And they used the men, the giant men, of, uh, of the offspring and these weapons to slay the dinosaurs. Because nothing could destroy them. They were that big, the dinosaurs. This would do it. But you'd need the strength to swing an axe that size. Look at the size of that woman compared to the axe. There's no way she could, even her husband, could not pick that axe up. Two men could, probably two men could pick that axe up. Maybe three, possible. Let's finish it out. Tim, two four, the plan of God. Genesis 6 4 tells us that the Nephilim were also on the earth after the flood. And it is then who Joshua was told to wipe out. Try now I want you to look at the size of the mummy they found. Look at the size of that 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 that, that woman here. I suppose it was a woman because the way she is, the way the mummy is is pressed into into the coffin. That's the size we're talking about. There's the ladder that's used to climb up that. So we're looking at a good twenty foot tall person, giant there, or better. Let's go on and finish. I'll, you're going to see more pictures of giants in here. Believe me. It's, it, you're going to be shocked. Such as the Rephaim, the, the Ephraim, Ephraim, the Orem, the Zamzuma, were all giants. The kingdom of Og was the land of the giants. Later... Now that was the femur bone that was in that other illustration that I explained to you. 47 inches tall. That's a man. And probably, he's probably the individual that dug it up. See the grave behind him? That bone right here above his knee to his hip is this bone here and whoever had this. So that shows you the size of the giant, that, how big this person was. That's 47 inches long. Almost as tall as that man. That's the upper leg bone right here. Between the, the hip, here, and his knee. That's that leg right here that you see. We also find Arva and Anak and his seven Anak sons, the seven Anak sons, Anak sons. also giants, along with the famed Goliath and his four brothers. Now, if you want to say, well, God should have let the 13-foot-tall evil hybrids spin on the destruction of humanity for the purpose of wiping out any chance for the redemption of man go, then you're free to think what you want. But please remember, this is according to the biblical narrative itself, which is where the accusations come from in the first place. The point is that if you're going to claim that you know that God is a tyrant because of this portion of the Bible, and you didn't know the rest of the story, just think about how many other issues there are in regards to the Bible where you might have missed it. Might have missed it. Well, you might have missed it. These are the dinosaur or the giant bones that they had found and discovered. Skeletons. And that was a skull that you seen back there in the one. There's that other illustration. Remember I told you the 47-inch femur? There it is, right there. Connected to the hip. That's the pelvic bone right here. There's the other bottom leg muscle, or leg, leg bone. It's supposed to be there. This is what they found. 47 inches long. That bone alone was 47 inches long. Almost as long is that person right there. Now we're going to finish going on. Which, there's a skull that was found, and you're going to see other uh, skeletons. I'm showing you what they had discovered. This is an individual, excuse me for my belching, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is an individual, they dug up the skeleton, and you can tell right there the size of the of the skulls. These are not fake. They dug these up. These are the giants that they found. Just because they they discovered Goliath 
in, in a biblical account does not necessarily mean that he was the only big one in there in the Bible. Because you have to understand, some of these other writings were never put in the Bible. Nobody knew about it. Now they're being resurfaced, the bones. Nothing hidden will remain hidden. It will be revealed openly. That's what God said. This is what you're seeing right now. That's why the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. That's why the books of Enoch are being resurfaced. The church and the Catholic diocese knew about all this information. They suppressed it and kept it down to keep from you, the people, from hearing it and seeing it. Okay? Because they wanted their position and authority and they wanted you to support them with the funds. They cared more about the money than anything else. So we're going to finish this out and you're going to see. Oh, that was the end of it. Okay, okay, there's more skeletons right here. There's a skull that was found. There's one that was found in the ocean that they dug up. Okay. So I'm trying to show you all the different things for watching that video. Uh, what I'm trying to explain to you, though, is these are things that were suppressed by the people in authority who had... You have to understand, back in the, during the time of Constantine in 312 A.D., uh, you had learned men, men with knowledge and understanding, kept it from the people and hid these in the catacombs. These are information that was uh, uh, hidden from the people. The Dead Sea Scrolls were just found back in 1948 after the state of Israel became a nation to themselves and the people uh, come back to the state of their country. So you have to understand what's taking place here. Everything is coming full circle here. Things are being revealed and coming out into the open again. The truth, the real truth, not the perversion truth of, of the church and what the church gives you. Let me uh, show you another video that will explain what uh, I believe happened. Okay, what I'm bringing now is a video of what I think happened to the dinosaur. It's a video of a man who brought creation together. In Genesis. An Australian man building in Noah's Ark in America has to find his critics again on building a dinosaur fossil named Ebenezer. He says proof humans live alongside dinosaurs. Ken Ham, the founder of the Creation Museum in Kentucky, will be unveiling a new exhibit of a 30 foot long skeleton of an Allosaurus on Saturday. The fossil resembles a Tyrannosaurus Rex and is the centerpiece of a new exhibit called Facing the Allosaurus. Now, what I explained to you in the illustration and pictures was that the angels, the fallen watchers, was depraved, and they went after the natural animals and made it with the natural animals, and because of that created this offspring that the Dead Sea Scrolls have or stated that were called monsters. And... This was during the time of Noah and the flood. And I think man has got his carbon dating and everything all screwed up. This is what this gentleman is doing here in creation. The person in this video in Kentucky that put this together. He feels like I do. And he is revealing it. He has more resources and money to be able to do this. I'm doing this in a small video form. He has actually created this museum to show this and pull this together to show the relationship between creation dinosaurs, the giants, the fallen angels, and what has happened. That's what I'm doing. I'm trying to bring this full circle 
and show you what really took place. Fitting in the missing pieces that Genesis in the Bible does not explain. And that other men that knew the truth of this would not allow it to be put in the Bible that you have today. Hidden. That's what I'm revealing to you today, right here. Secrets. Now, let's go on. And like I said, this is the reunion between the angels, supernatural with natural, to create this monstrous creature called the dinosaurs. Not only that, but also created the giant men that were asked to go against these monstrous beasts to kill them because they were ravenous and they were eating everything in sight, even men. So let's finish this out. According to Annie Percival Genesis, the Christian ministry that owns the museum, 50% of the skeleton's bones were recovered when it was found in Colorado over a decade ago. Keeping with its Bible-themed approach, the Creation Museum says the dinosaur died in a worldwide flood about 4,300 years ago. However, scientists say the last dinosaurs were on the Earth more than 60 million years ago. Mr. Hemp, who gained notoriety for his $80 million plan to build an ark and a high-profile evolution debate with science educator Bill Nye, said the new exhibit will help us defend the book of Genesis and expose the scientific problems with evolution. Evolutionists use dinosaurs to reach children more than anything to promote their worldview, the former Queensland science teacher said. Our museum uses dinosaurs to help tell their true history according to the Bible. Mr. Yam's debate with Nye in February drew millions of viewers and intense national media attention. Nye challenged the biblical story by describing how animals would have behaved during such a flood event, citing the fossil layers at the Grand Canyon as an example. Nye said if there was a big flood on the earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a high level, which would mean their bones would be mingled with fossils known to be from a later time period. Not any that would be true to the smaller animals, but not the larger animals. You have to understand, we're talking about animals so huge and so big, it would be almost impossible for their massive size and bone structure to climb up Mount Everest to get away from the flood. See, the scientists, they try to use their theory to, to debunk but they don't understand the natural body and how the body functions. They're only looking at it from one aspect. They're trying to prove and debunk the Bible and trying to prove their theory of evolution uh, and all that other stuff. Because T-Rex could not climb up Mount Everest. Not because he's not strong enough, it's just because his body weight and mass and the way his bone structure would could not be able to climb up that rigid side of a mountain to get away from a flood that's drowning, even as bad as he wanted to. He would just stay there and drown. Smaller animals like rodents could probably make it up to the top, provided the oxygen limit up there is very thin, wouldn't suffocate them and they wouldn't die. Because it doesn't matter. The highest mountain was covered. That's how deep the flood was. One of them did, not a single one. Daniel Phelps, president of the Kentucky Paleontological Society, said in a release Thursday that the Creation Museum has decided, without doing research, that the dinosaur fossil is evidence of Noah's flood. The Allosaurus, named Ebenezer, was donated to the museum by the Elizabeth Strait Barutka Foundation, which purchased the bones over a decade ago. Michael Barutka, a member of the Foundation and the Constitution Party's candidate for president in 2004, said the fossil is a testimony to the creative power of God in designing dinosaurs. It also lends evidence to the truth of a worldwide catastrophic flooding of the Earth in Noah's time. 
but according to Mark Lennon, a paleontologist at the University of Wyoming, the Allosaurus was a large carnivore that lived in North America during the North America period about 150 million years ago. Million years ago. Okay, to bring a full circle on this, they have to understand something, that if this took place, and I believe so with all my heart, I'm going to close this out, uh, and then I'm going to end this out. Uh, this, I believe, took place. You have to understand something, that if that's true, and the angels, the fallen watchers, did come down, made it with the animals at the same time as they made it with the women, the daughters, created these monstrous animals and creatures. You have to understand, Adam lived on the earth for 900 years. Okay? In 900 years, they could spread all over the world. Everywhere. So, the theory of nine million years ago or a billion years ago and all that other stuff, see, I don't go along with that. But I do believe in what took place because of records and other writings that support that. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found with this writing in there, talking about giants and monstrous beasts and the angels coming down on the earth. That's what I believe. And that's what I believe took place. I believe that God seen that the angels had caused so much debauchery and so much depravity and evilness and corruption and what they did that he destroyed the world and destroyed everything on it except for Noah and his, and his children, his wife and his son's wives. Now giants did occur, but uh, they occurred normally after the flood uh, in a size that uh, I believe that was even, but even then, they gave an account of giants, the Israelites. The Israelites even stated that the giants made them look like grasshoppers. So, this is video two of this, and please give me your uh, uh, ideals, comments. I would please ask you to, to comment on these and let me know what you think. And I want to thank you, and bye for now. I will bring more studies on other topics in the Bible. Uh, and I thank you so very much. Thank you.